Hi, it's Sam. In this video, we will be looking at expectations or expected value or expected value of the statistics um, in this uh, interactive workshop, statistical inference. So yeah, besides the expectation central limit theorem, we will also be uh, introduced in this workshop. So let's open the R Studio. Selection five expectations. Okay, as you may expect, we'll be discussing expected values. Expected value of what exactly? Expected value of the people who vote for me next year. Expected um, bonus for me in the next year. The expected salary increment for me. The expected uh, passing rate of uh, student. Expected people to fail in this course. Hopefully no. Okay, so the expected value of a random variable, like, uh, basically it's coming a number and measure. So ex is a measure of its central tendency for a discrete random number x with PMF is a probability mass function is defined as a sum over all possible values of x quantity p times px. Yeah. Expected value represent the center of mass of a collection of location and the weights. Okay, so these are the formal definitions. Let's have a look at the, uh, let the example. Another term for expected value is mean. Mean value, average value. Recall our high school definition of arithmetic mean or average. The sum of a bunch of numbers divided by the total number of numbers you added together. This is considered as a formal definition of x for all numbers are equally weighted. Okay, so we assume everything is equally weighted. Huh? Okay, random variable x. A rolling of a fair dice. By fair, we mean all sides are equally likely to appear. So what is the expected value of x? <clears throat> so a fair dice has six faces, uh, six surfaces. So each face has a number. So six faces, so you have number one, two, three, four, five, six. So six numbers. So the question here, what is the average number of this six number? So basically this is this x. So this so assuming you roll a lot of times you roll the dice roll the dice roll the dice many many times one million times then for so much time so so many times one million times you add up all the face values when they land and add them together divided by one million so that will be the expected value of x so that value will be one plus two plus three plus four plus six divided by six right? because each face uh, the chance to get uh, each face is equal, which is 1 plus 6. Yeah. So it's called fair dice. So each side they are equally likely to appear. So this is the expected value of x. Oh, okay. So that one is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 divided by 6. 3.5. That is expected value. Okay, so x, x expect dice, which takes a uh, probability mass function as an input for our purpose. That is a six long of fraction. The i's entry in the other represent the probability of i being or outcome of the dice row. So look at function. No, let's look at this function. This function is here. Oh, it's not here. <clears throat> Expected dice function. Okay, this is it. So this function is defined as this function PMF. That's the value. Mean value equal to zero for one. For i in one to six, you give i times PMF i. Okay. So we also define the PMF for three dice. Dice fair, dice high, and then dice low. So there are three different dice. 
So that's fair is each of the sides have the equal probability to, to appear and that's high means uh, <clears throat> there's more chance to have the a larger number so uh, four five six are considered as a larger number uh, and one two three are considered as a uh, uh, lower number and the index low the lower number will appear more frequently than the higher number Okay, that is high. You can see this is a probability of one appearing, which is around 4.7%, 10% for two, 14% for three, and so on, and 28% uh, for six. So you can see the appearance of six will be more than the appearance of one because the probability of six is larger than the one. So this is that is high. So I have different, and all these six numbers. The probability number, they sum up, the sum of it will be equal to 1 or 100%. Huh? Okay, so function expect dice with dice high, with its calculated expect value of a row of dice expected value. Dice high. So here's the probability dice function. <coughs> okay, for the dice high, the probability at uh, the expected value is no longer 3.5, it will be 4. Point three. Huh? Okay, that is low. No, just take that's flat fair first. Three IR first. We'll have a look at that's flat. So it's three point five. That's low. That's low. What's the value of that's low? Two point six six, which is lower than three point five. Else, it's determined by the probability function. It's no longer equally distributed. Let's have a look. <coughs> Okay, now you can see the effect of loading the dice of the expectations. 4.33, low, loaded dice is 2.0. Okay, we store these for you in two variables. Expected dice high, expected dice low. We will need them later. Okay. One of the nice probability of expected value operation is that it's linear. It means that c is a constant expected value c times x equal to c times expected value x. Okay, it follows this formula. So this is the formula. So it's called linear. Suppose you are rolling two loaded dice, that's high and that's low. You can use this linearity property of the expectation to compute the expected value of the average. Let x high and x low represent the outcome of the dice roll. The expected value of the average is this expected. Expected high plus expected low divided by 2, or 2.5 times expected high plus expected. Compute this now. Remember, we store the value in. Expected that so e d h plus e d l okay three point five three point five we expect in here so we expect that right Okay, for a continuous variable x, the expected value is defined as it for the discrete case instead. Blah blah blah. Expecting to over a continuous function. Okay, so it's a <coughs> integral over a continuous function. Okay, expected x is an area under the function t times ft for a continuous run. Where ft is a probability density function, it's no longer probability mass function, it's probability density function. So the area under a probability density function curve, the area is 1, 100%. So for the continuous variable, we use the integral, so we calculate t times ft. This definition borrows from the definition of the center of mass of continuous body. Okay, theory. Okay, so here is a figure from the side. It shows that oh, 
quite a lot theory. <laughs> it shows the constant one uh, probability density function on the left and the graph of t times ft on the right. So the area under this pro probability density function is one. What is one? The scale from one zero to one. This is one. One times zero to one y-axis. One times one. Go to one. So this is a square box, and the area for area under the curve huh, is one. Huh? So t times f t on the right. So when you are zero point two five times one, zero point two five times one, you have zero point two five. When you are zero point five times one, zero point five times one, you have zero point five. So when you are zero point five, is zero point five. So this is t times f t. T times f t. So knowing the expected value of area is a triangle t times f t. What is the expected value of the random variable with this PDF? So this is 0 0.5, right? 0 0.5. 0 0.5 determines the expected value. <coughs> so you're really on a roll. Okay, the purpose of this illustration here using a probability density function as it shows the triangular probability density function on the left and a probability density on the right the area under the probability between 0 and 2 expected value of the random variable with this PDF okay so the probability density function has changed then the t times ft also changes also changes Okay, to find the expected value of this new random variable with a different probability density function, and these are all not normal. If it's normal probability density function, we'll see the bell curve. Yeah. So we'll go to that later. Yeah. To find the expected value of this one, we need to integrate a function t times ft, where ft equals to t divided by 2. Yeah. The diagonal line. So you might recall this from the last probability lesson. So the last lesson. The function you are integrating over is therefore t power 2 divided by 2. So we are defining a function, my function for you to represent this. You can use our function, integrate with parameter my function. With parameter my function. 0 bound and high bound to find the expected value. Zero and the up bound is two. Zero up bound is two. It's two. One point three three. Okay. So the expected value is one point three three. <coughs> one point three three. So as all the examples show, expect the value of the distribution are useful in characterizing the in characterizing the so the value. Often populations are too big to measure and blah blah blah. First, a very simple toy simple equation. Small population of five numbers for you call S pop. Let's have a look at S pop. S pop has five numbers. Okay, the R function mean will give us the mean value of S pop. S P O P. Okay. S pop were bigger and we couldn't measure it directly and instead had to sample it with sample size of two. Okay, assume these S pop are very large, so we are going to the central limit theorem. So S pop is the population, it only has five members. And now we need to do a sample of two, assuming the population is very, very large. And we can only do a small sample of two. 
So there are 10 such samples, right? And we store these for you in a 10 times 2 matrix called all sample. So let's look at that. It's a matrix. So it's a time 10 times 2. Now, so there's 10 samples we pick up a draw 10 times. Each time we will draw two members from the population. Okay, from the five member population. So first time we'll get a one and a four. Second time we'll get one and seven and so on. The third time one and a ten. The last time we'll get ten and thirteen. So these are the numbers from the S pop. Okay, each of the ten samples will have a mean mean value, right? So we use our function to apply calculate and each row of the matrix. Now on each row we simply use apply. So this is the apply function. We have learned a more complex version, complex version of apply, which is L apply and S apply. So apply is uh, a simplified version of it. So all sample. So here <clears throat> we need to provide a number. So y. Now one. One tells tells the apply function that. 1 means row level. If we provide the 2 here, that it will mean the column. So 1 is, uh, one is uh, row level. Okay, so we calculate the, we apply the function called mean row by row, row by row. So the mean value for the first row of these two numbers, 1 plus 4 divided by 2, so it will be 2.5. Then we apply the mean value for the second row. 1 plus 7 divided by 2, that would be 4. 4, okay? So the rows are going to triple. Okay, so 2.5, 4, and so on. Okay, we can see from the resulting vector, the sample varies a lot from 2.5 to 11, right? Not unexpected, the sample mean depends on the sample. However, Okay, if we take the expected value of these sample means, we will see something amazing. Let's see. Sample mean. S means for you. <coughs> mean. S mean. Let's have a look at S mean first. So this is S mean. So basically, it's the value we have. So we get the mean value of the S mean. What does this mean? Seven. You're really on the roll, yeah. Seven. Seven is the population mean earlier we calculated. So what the message here is the result here, the mean of the samples mean is very similar to the population mean the same as a mean of the original population as pop. This is not because the sample was specially cooked. It would work on any population. So we will get to that later. The expected value or mean of the sample mean is the population mean. The average of the sample's average is the population average. What this means is that the sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the population mean. Okay, so we use the samples, we draw many many samples. For each sample, we calculate the mean value of their samples. Then we calculate the mean value of the second sample, like the mean value of the third sample. And all these samples mean, we get an average. And that average number, single number, will be an unbiased it's estimated it's the value for the entire population. So this is actually the uh, central limit theory. Okay, and uh, the mean value for all these samples, mean value will form a normal distribution. Right? That's the uh, actual central limit theory. So formally, an estimator E of any parameter V is unbiased if its expected value equals V. For example, expected E equals to V. We ensure that expected value of a sample mean equals the popular mean with some simple algebra. Okay, blah, blah, blah. So this is a simple algebra. Expected mean value. Hmm. So this is a mathematical proof. 
simulations. Okay. Yes, another view. Okay. Example mean and the mean of the average spikes together. This is the population mean. This is the observations, the samples mean. So they have they peaked at the same place. The two shaded distribution come from the same data. The blue portion represent the density function of randomly generated standard normal data. The pink proportion represents the density function of 1000 average each of the 10 random normals. So the pink color is the, the original data was stored in the 1000 times. 10 area and the average of each row was taken to generate the pink data okay so the blue color is the population the original data then we start to continue to draw small samples uh, we draw how many hundred thousand samples each sample contains 10 numbers contains 10 numbers from the blue color then we get the calculate the mean of the sample mean and uh, it's also same as the mean of the population, uh, the blue colors mean. Okay, so the original data was stored in these, and the average of each row was taken to generate the pink data. So the pink data, pink data is the sample's mean value. So there's hundred thousand mean values of the sample, and use these hundred thousand, we plot these. Uh, pink curve okay this is another example so we roll dice uh, we roll many dice one two three four so rolling die uh, ten thousand times you the first figure ten thousand times each of the six possible outcomes up here about the same frequency because they have six faces, so face one to face six appear the same. Uh, appear the same. The second graph is the histogram outcome of the average of rolling two dice. Average of rolling two dice. Two dice. We roll two dice, so it's like do one hundred samples of two dice. So two dice, one get one, another get say three. Then we get the average one plus three divided by two. This is the the second graph shows so each time uh, uh, we roll the die still uh, 10,000 times but each time we throw two dice and get the average similarly the third one is histogram average of the rolling three dice so this is roll throwing three dice so still 10,000 times but we throw three dice for each time and for the three dice they have three different values we calculate the mean value then we have one 10,000 samples mean values and we use that 10,000 mean value to plot this then, uh, histogram and this is the third graph and the fourth graph is the fourth graph is uh, four dice so we do the four dice okay as we shown progressively the center of the mean of the original distribution is 3.5 and this is exactly what all the panels are centered so 3.5 is the expected value for a fair dice and uh, this shows that the second graph, the peak is 3.5 as well so you start to get and with more and more dice thrown together that is the effect of average so they tend to get more and more clustered or centered at the expected value of 3.5 3.5 and as and you can see that there's more data centered into 3.5 and the two sides of the tail get lesser and the lesser and the lesser so you see the central limit theorem at work okay
Okay, so let's recap. Expect value are the properties of the distribution. The average or the mean value, the random itself is a random variable. So this is also a random variable. So the random variable form the different shape. This that's the distribution. <laughs> the center of this distribution is the same as that of the original distribution. In this fair dice, the original distribution, the original distribution's expected value is 3.5. If you throw many many times, each time you throw one dice, you will get a roughly the same number of face uh, for the six different numbers. Uh, for the six different values, so get 3.5. So all the rest of shows that uh, with the mean of samples mean, they all centered at 3.5, the same as the original distribution. Okay. Hmm. Expect very are properties of distribution. Distribution. <laughs> Demanding parents. A proportion mean is a center of mass of what? A population mean is a center of mass of a population. Eh? A population mean is a center of mass of a population. A sample mean is the center of mass of observed data. Observed data is the sample. Sample is observed data. True or false? A population mean estimates a sample mean. Is it right? We should say a sample mean estimates a population mean. Sample mean is observable and population mean most times is not observable. It's, it's not known. So we use what we know to estimate what we don't know. So it should be false. A sample mean is unbiased. Proofs, yeah, just mathematical readings. I'll say long proof. Okay, the more data that goes to the sample mean, the more concentrated is density mass function around the population mean. Is it true or false? Record this. In the second graph, we throw two dice at the same time. Third graph, we throw three dice. Fourth graph, we throw four dice. So this is equivalent to the more data that goes into the sample mean. So in the second one, we calculate mean using two values. Calculate third one, calculate mean three values. Fourth one, calculate mean using four values, more and more. So what do we observe? The more concentrated is density mass function. So these are the density functions, the distribution. So are they more clustered? With more samples goes to the mean, uh, they are more centered. This is loosely, this is even more loose. Uh, this is more centered. Centered to 3.5 and the two tails has lesser uh, occurrence. Uh, so this is true. So this is actually the power of uh, central limit theorem. True. Okay. Yeah, so that's the end of this lesson about the expectations. So expectation is a little bit abstract and uh, it concerns a lot of uh, probability, mass function, probability, density function, and blah, 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 blah. So it's quite dry and the theor theoretic, but the key point here, key takeaway here is refer to this example of uh, throwing the dice from a non-normally distributed original distribution, we continue to draw the samples mean, calculate the mean of the samples mean, we will find that the sample mean actually follow a normal distribution. And this normal distribution is guaranteed that the mean of the sample will guarantee to form a normal distribution, that is central limit theory, regardless of the original data distribution. Okay, so this is the key takeaway for this workshop. Yeah, hope you enjoy. If you have questions, don't hesitate to approach me offline. Okay, bye.